hello 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 guys welcome back to my youtube channel after a whole year of not posting and i am very excited to be back i have really been procrastinating uh, posting on youtube i have so many edited videos that i have been meaning to post but life happened there's a lot that has happened this whole year and i am excited to post what has been happening uh, but that will be for future videos so today we are here to for me to tell you about my birth and delivery story yay so let's get to it hi guys so today is the 13th of january and uh, tomorrow is my due date officially yay that is 40 weeks I'm still very pregnant and um, you see my hair is looking shaggy and I'm not prepared for um, that postpartum period I know I won't have enough time to deal with my hair or my nails whatsoever during that period and all that time will be directed towards little princess so today i have decided to gather up all my energy and go to the salon and um, make my hair and make my nails so yeah i know i'm breathing heavily it's the weight guys it's the weight it's the weight yeah so i'm excited let's do this so for my hair I'm going to brush box brush box it's in agro house first floor opposite um, Afia Center it's in town guys they're very affordable and then for my nails I'm going to Moy Avenue uh, the place I normally go to is called Zalox I don't know if it's Zalox or Zalox potato potato anyway so i'm going to make my nails there i'm going with my cousins uh to you know to have a good time to spend the day and um not have to think about tomorrow and to reduce my anxiety yeah all in all i'm excited yay having breakfast with my cousins and my hubby and um, and then we start preparing to go to hospital so I'll keep another look hi I keep on falling for you Such a beautiful light When I still want you closer mm -hmm. I am longing for closure And I'm wondering why No, no matter what I do I keep on falling for you My EDD was on the 14th of January 
that day was very special to me because it is my mom's birthday by then i was very heavily pregnant I was so tired i was in pain my back was in pain my pelvic area was in pain i developed sciatica at six months and i was dealing with that through and through by the time i was getting to 40 weeks i was on pregabalin i was on chamador and i was still working my 12 hour jobs <laughs> i'm a nurse so i had to work i had to so by then i was so done so on let's go back a little bit so on the 6th we went for our gynecologist appointment and we had a preeclampsia scare and um my blood pressure was a bit high and that is detrimental to the baby if your blood pressure is high so if they find out that your blood pressure is high you are normally taken for emergency c-section so i had that scare and i was told to take a walk relax and take my blood pressure again so by the time i came back my blood pressure had gone down which was a plus so the sixth section did not happen that day so i did not give birth to my baby girl that day we went home let me tell you i was disappointed i was so tired and i just wanted it to be done actually uh it is not um it is not that if you have a a, a, a preeclampsia that you have to have c-section i was to be induced sorry about the c-section story i was to be induced on the sixth but since my blood pressure went down we were told to go home and wait for my edd which is which was on 14th so when i went home i was so so disappointed because i was tired i just wanted it to be over <sighs> but we waited regardless we waited so fast forward to uh 11th the 11th of january so that's when i got into early labor so i had contractions on and off but they were not maintaining the frequency and it was not uh progressing but it was on and off it was it was present on the 11th 12th 13th so all through i was waiting for either my water to break or for the labor to progress which did not happen so on the 14th we went for another gynecologist appointment because that's that was the day that we had been told to go in case i had not gone into labor or before before the 14th so when we went to the hospital uh we were admitted we were admitted and um we got to my hospital room okay the admission process took almost a whole day but we also got that late so i got to my room at around two two there yes and then um for maternity once you're admitted there's a machine called the ctg machine where it's tied around your bum so that uh, it can measure the contractions the heart rate of the baby and also your heart rate the ctg machine was tied around my bum and i was supposed to remain um to, to continue lying down for around 30 minutes to 45 minutes so that the machine could measure the contractions the heart rate of the baby and mine so that was the case and after like 30 minutes when the nurses came to check the um, the progress of the ctg machine it the heart rate of the baby was was high 
and it's remained continually high you see um the normal heart rate of a of a fetus is between 110 to 160 beats per minute but baby's heart rate was going from 170 to 180 beats per minute and it was not going down <laughs> it was not going down at all so all this time i didn't know i didn't know probably she was in distress so it was crystal clear that she was in distress because it was not coming below 170 bits per minute so that's when i started panicking huh so this nurse um the nurse who came to to check on the ctg machine oh uh, before she informed me that the heart rate was high she was like no don't panic <laughs> don't panic but uh let me show you something so um she turned the the screen of the ctg machine towards me and she's like okay her heart rate is 178 and don't panic we will continue measuring it uh, monitoring it and see if it will go down okay so by then i was <laughs> I was panicking, but I was really trying my best to stay cool, to stay calm. I keep on falling for you. So when the CTG machine had finished recording, she took the paper and said that she's going to consult um, the gynecologist on call. So she did that and um, the gyna said that um it didn't look like it was going down there was no moment in that recording in that graph that her heart rate came below 170. remember that heart rates of babies have to be between 110 to 160 160 meaning it's it's the highest point so if it's between 170 to 180 it means that it is detrimentally high so uh she consulted the gynecologist gynecologist said that we have to go in for an emergency yes but remember we had not made up our minds for emergency yes we had come in for induction all through my pregnancy i had prepared psychologically for my uh for for our natural delivery i was so excited so energetic so psychologically prepared to go in for my natural birth and I was so ready, you know, on that, when we were getting admitted, I was so excited. Yes, there were those jitters of the pain that I was going to go through, but all in all, I was excited that I was going to go through my natural birth that I had prepared for. And finally, finally, I was going to meet my baby girl. But here we get into hospital and from the minute we get into the room, everything is going sideways, <laughs> you know so um after the gynecologist said that uh, we have to prepare for emergencies yes suddenly um, um like all the nurses that were present in that shift came into my room so a point to note is i went to the hospital i normally worked in that is nairobi west hospital and um since we know each other, they came in to like help me calm down and to talk to me. But at that point, I was so freaked out, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So um, they came in, talked to me, but while they were talking to me, at that point, I still have to sign the, 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 the consent forms to agree that i have agreed to go for emergency cs and by that time i was i was crying <laughs> i was in shock i was i was so scared for my for my baby at that point i was not even thinking about me you know and i was trying to think of what could have caused her to get into distress anyway I signed the papers 
and i remember going to the washroom area with my hubby because i was supposed to change into um a theater gown and um we went in there <sighs> we went in there and i asked him to to pray to pray for for the whole process because everything was just not going according to plan and we came out i had changed into my hospital gown and we were now told to wait for the anesthetist and the and the and the surgeon that was the gynecologist so um we waited um around 10 minutes later the anesthetist walked in and he was there asking me questions about the pregnancy if i had had any um problems during pregnancy or towards the end of pregnancy so earlier during my pregnancy at around eight weeks i got covid and i was admitted for three days oh it was the worst period because i had hyperemesis and the nausea was so bad and i had covid i lost so much weight and i thought i was going to have a miscarriage but thankfully thank god that did not happen so uh, during that period they found that i had glucosuria that is glucose in urine and you are not supposed to have that because that is usually an indicator of um diabetes in pregnancy so after i was discharged i was supposed to come back for for checkup to to see if i still had the glucose in my urine and to also check if i was um there's a test called ogtt uh, oral glucose tolerance test that is to check if you are truly diabetic uh, i had those tests but it confirmed that i didn't have any diabetes it was just the glucose in urine so fast forward now to that to to now the 14th when we are preparing to go to 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 the nini to the theater um yeah i was now talking to to the anesthetist he was asking if i had any uh, problems if i had any diabetes any chronic illnesses so after that the guy came she was so lovely and she tried to calm me down so we went into the theater We went into the theater and <laughs> as i had said everything was going sideways by then so i thought that i would be able to go into the theater with my hubby which we were told is not hygienic because uh, in theater you have to maintain a sterile a sterile environment and having other people who are not the medical personnel there who have um who don't know how to maintain a sterile environment it's going to cause an infection so my hubby was told to stay out and that even increased my anxiety so we went in i had the epidural and i was told to lie down so everything was getting so real so real up by this time and the surgery started and during the surgery i had this heaviness in my chest i felt like i was not breathing so i started gasping <laughs> i started gasping but here is a guy in and the anesthetist telling me that you're fine you know i i had so much anxiety i couldn't breathe well i couldn't breathe well i couldn't breathe 
there was just a lot going on <laughs> there was just a lot going on so after that we the the the, the surgery was done my baby girl was out and she was crying and then uh, the guy said that um she was indeed in distress because she had meconium meconium is the first poop of the baby so when she poops inside um when she poops inside it means that she's in distress so that means that's why her heart rate was so high and um that my placenta had calcified so calcification means that they there are calcium deposits into the placenta meaning it normally um impedes the passage of oxygen that's another reason why she was in distress as well so baby girl was out she was crying she looked well she was so tiny <laughs> and i was happy so we finished that um the surgery was over i went back to my room i found my my mother-in-law there and my and my sister-in-law they had come to to comfort us because of how the whole process had gone and it was a lovely get together you know that period of she's finally here everyone is there with you in the room and they're congratulating you and we are there thanking god for the safe delivery despite it not going according to how we wanted it to go and i was encouraged by the fact that we might have planned and planned and psychologically prepared for something to go in a certain way we have put it in our minds the way we want it to go in a certain way but thereafter god has a different plan and the end result is is what matters is it's because god had ordained it to happen in that way and he was going to make sure everything went according to his will and it is for us to relish in that to to glorify god through that because everything he does he does to bring glory to his kingdom and i found reprieve in that and i can't say that even during my postpartum period that i was a hundred percent okay with how things went i still had ptsd and i kept thinking what wrong thing did i do so that i put my baby in distress or what was it what was it and i tried going through and through the process and and trying to see if anything was wrong but there was nothing wrong there's nothing wrong i did it was just god's plan god had planned it to go that way and i was supposed to be fine with that because his way is the best way at the end i was just thankful that baby was here well she was healthy she was happy and we were surrounded with people who love us and people who are intentional about us <laughs>
After that, we stayed in hospital for around four days because I was supposed to fully recover from was supposed to fully recover from the from for from the scar. The services were amazing, and I just I was grateful. I was grateful. bye so yeah that's my delivery story it didn't go as planned but i'm just thankful that we are here together both alive and well and i cannot be more grateful because that is just such a gift so thank you if you're here if you stay here till the end of the video thank you god bless you and see you on my next video bye mm -hmm.